Good morning. I'm Doreen Leto. And I'm Steve Leto. Welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Lent. We invite you to participate in this worship ready to follow the way of the cross. We're reminded in worship that as he neared his death on the cross, Jesus never stopped putting love in action. He never stopped teaching, healing, or feeding. He never stopped praying, singing, or eating with his friends. In this worship, you will be invited to do the same as we pray, sing, hear scripture, and share Holy Communion together. And just a couple of announcements. Later today, Pastor Michelle Townsend Lopez from Cross will be facilitating part one of a two-part series discussion on how to talk to children about racism. It can be hard for parents and grandparents to know how to approach such an important and difficult topic. And with Pastor Michelle will give us some tips, resources, and activities we can do. Today's workshop will be from 3 to 5 p.m. over Zoom. And after Lent, we will meet again for part two on Sunday, April 11th. Anyone who has young people in their lives, such as parents, grandparents, or teachers, who would like resources on discussing race with kids of all ages are welcome to attend. See Lisa Wagner if you have any questions. And the wooden crosses from Ash Wednesday are still available at the entrance of the church all week. With the communion, you can stop by any time during Lent to pick one up for yourselves or for a friend. For our Lenten midweek services, we will be hearing from our ministry partners. Please join us in the Zoom services, which will be on our YouTube channel at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. And join us for our next Lenten Coffee and Conversation series on Thursday at 6 p.m. over Zoom. We're discussing chapters 5, 6, and 7 of Pastor Duncan's book, Dear Church. Anyone is welcome to join, and you don't have to have attended any other prior sessions to participate. There are copies of the book available to read on the table in the narthex. And Pastor Alexis will be outside with communion today from 9 to 10.30 a.m. Now, we invite you to take a moment to center yourselves as Pastor Alexis leads us in worship. Good morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with me. Oh, mm -hmm. 
me in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion, fountain of living water. Pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and the power of God. By all of that, your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Jesus calls us to love, and we have a responsibility to care for one another as Christ cares for us. Yet we often fail to do it. We build up walls rather than bridges. We keep people out who need to be invited in. We lose the way of the cross. We light two candles as a symbol of our hope in Jesus Christ to teach us again how to love, how to break down walls, and to build bridges. Responsibility is love in action. Let us pray. Creator God, let us again of our responsibilities to care for one another and to watch out for each other. As we journey towards the cross this Lenten season, help us to love our neighbors and our, as ourselves. Amen. Make me a servant, humble and meek. Lord, let me lift up those who are weak. And may the prayer of my heart always be. Make me a servant, make me a servant. Make me a servant today. Would you please pray with me the prayer of the day? O oh God, by the passion of your beloved Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Genesis chapter 17. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. 
God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Please read responsibly Psalm 22, verses 23 to 31 with me. You who fear the Lord give praise. All you of Jacob's line give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the ends of the Lord shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship, and all who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days be rise again. He said all of this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life will for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you please pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Do you ever read about Abraham? about his huge leap of faith to follow exactly where God was calling, to leave home with just the promise of a, a countless number of descendants and little more than that? Do you ever read about him and think, what a show off? I do. I mean, what God asks of Abraham is absolutely unbelievable and a little bit ridiculous. Walk before me, God says, and be blameless. 
Yeah, sure. Okay, God, let me get right on that. Walk before me and be blameless. When the Bible says Abraham responded by falling down on his face, I always imagined it was more like fainting out of the shock of such a ridiculous ask, not an act of reverence. But maybe that's just me putting myself into the story a little bit. Still, it's remarkable. Not knowing where he was going, not knowing what he would encounter along the way, not knowing what dangers he would face um, and, and what he might lose, not knowing much of anything, he set out because God asked to walk before God to the place prepared for him with just a hope and a prayer. And for Paul, and for millions of people after him, people of faith, that act was super inspiring. The model of true faith and faithfulness, an example for all of us to live by. And some days it is for me too. But in other days, it convicts me. It convicts me because the story of Abraham makes me feel alone. It makes me feel inadequate. It makes me feel so far from where I need to be. Walk before me and be blameless? Hardly. Abram followed the way that God set before him with determination and surety, even into the unknown. Without doubt or question, he gave up everything. He gave up his life to go, to put his very self, his life, his future into God's hands. Could you have done it? I don't know if I could. Maybe Abram just had more gumption. Maybe he had more faith. Maybe he was just better than me. I mean, look around at the world, at all the things that are being asked of us to be a witness for the weak and the suffering, to advocate for the poor, to love the unlovable. In the midst of refugee crises and school shootings, global epidemics and stock market turbulence, racist systems and heroin overdoses, climate change and rampant disregard for life, God sure does ask a lot of us as God's followers. Walk before me, God says. Go to this place that I don't yet know for you, that I can't quite tell you, but go. Walk before me and be blameless. Leave everything you know, every comfort you have to do this hard thing that I'm calling you to do. Walk before me. Leave your home and your people. Go to a place that I will show you. It could be, exact, it could be pretty hard to know just exactly how to do that. Jesus spoke to a people who were also being asked a lot. He was heading towards Jerusalem on the way to the cross. And he laid it out plain for them. A lot is going to be asked of you, Jesus says. To be my followers, you have to follow me into the darkness, through the pain, with your fear. And that sounds almost as daunting as Abraham's leap of faith thousands of years before. Except, except Jesus gives us a small glimpse of how maybe we could do such a thing. See, Jesus says, if you want to be my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Later, he says, and those who therefore lose their life for the sake of the gospel will save it. Here, Jesus explains in a nutshell the course of discipleship. One, we don't do this work alone or for ourselves alone. 
And two, taking up the cross means service and sacrificial love. We don't do this work alone or for ourselves alone. I think that's what Jesus means when he says, let them deny themselves. You see, we cannot follow Jesus if we are solely concerned about ourselves and our own needs. If we only put our ideas, interests, and passions ahead of others, if we are primarily and predominantly concerned with our own safety or privilege or physical comfort in order to find life, we need to lose our life. We need to deny what is most basic, our most basic instinct to preserve ourselves. We need to give it up. If we want to follow Jesus, then we have to put away our self-centeredness. We have to acknowledge that we are part of a group, a family. We are members of one another, is how Paul will later describe it in the New Testament. We have to trust and believe that we are church together. It's interesting to note that as Jesus explains discipleship to the crowds that day, he continuously uses plural language. He doesn't say to them, hey, you individual, deny yourself and take up your cross. He says to all of them gathered, my followers are the ones who deny themselves and take up their crosses and follow. As a mission um, instructor once told me as I was in orientation to become a, uh, a mission uh, participant, a missionary with the Young Adults and Global Mission Program, we were told, and this has stayed with me, it's about you, but it's not all about you. It's not all about you. Deny yourself. It's, it's about who we are together in Christ, pulled together by the Holy Spirit, made all of us in the image of our God, the Creator. It's about what we are willing to leave behind to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. We do not do this work alone or for ourselves alone. Maybe that's one of the reasons that Abraham was able to take the risk that he did and to follow on faith, because he didn't do it alone. He did it with his wife, his partner, Sarah. He did it with his family for the sake of his family and for generations to come. It wasn't just about him. It was about others, about God's people. The second principle of discipleship that, um, that Jesus teaches was that those who would be his followers um, would need to know that as they take up their cross, it would mean service and sacrificial love. Mind you, it's important for us to understand what it means to take up the cross and what it would have meant to the people then when Jesus tells these this group of, of followers, that they would need to take up their crosses, there would have been nothing but horror on their expressions because until that point, the cross was simply a, a tool of torture and death. It was Rome's preferred method of punishing those who were deemed dangerous to the empire. Jesus wants them to take up a cross Surely that meant they were committing themselves to die. And there's a little bit to that. But they didn't fully understand what the cross would come to mean and why the cross would become so significant. Because when Jesus would head to the cross, it would come to mean something so much more. The cross wasn't just death. It was a sacrificial death. Death out of a deep and abiding love, service, and humility. In Jesus' crucifixion, the cross became a symbol of living and dying for others. A symbol of love, the kind of love that persists 
despite suffering, the disciples and the crowds wouldn't have understood it quite then, quite right away, but they would soon. That there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for a friend. That's what they would come to understand. Friends, God still calls us to walk blamelessly before him, still calls us to go into futures unknown for the sake of God's vision for the people of God and for the world that God made. And it's still scary and it's still hard. And we still don't quite know how to do all of it. But when we feel like we are too doubtful to trust where God is calling, when we feel too inadequate to meet the needs before us, when we feel like we couldn't possibly make a difference, when we are too afraid to go and do or say anything, when we know that we are afraid, then we can trust that we are not alone to fend for ourselves on this walk of faith. No, we are connected, each and every one of us, in our limitations, with our doubts and our fears. We are united in this work of following Christ and of serving according to God's will. We uplift and encourage one another, even as we make sacrifices to love deeper than we thought possible. And when we do this, when we follow the path of Jesus, when we give up our own need for profit and protection, when we give up the desire for self-honor and glory, when we give up the inability to look out only for our own self-interests, and instead live a life with others for the sake of others, we will find life, true life, because that is where we find the Christ who calls us to follow. Siblings in Christ, this is what is awaiting those of us who follow Jesus, who work together for the sake of the gospel and who live lives of service and sacrificial love. We find life, abundant life. Thanks be to God.
we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Your gift of grace is for all people. Give confident faith to all the baptized, that they may follow you wholeheartedly. Give new believers joy in your promises. Give hope and courage to those who suffer for their faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All the ends of the earth worship you. From galaxies to microorganisms, preserve your creation. Teach humanity to wonder at your works and to join you in tending to creation's well-being. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You rule over the nations. Raise up advocates for peace and justice within and between nations. Give life where hope seems dead. Call into existence new realities we cannot even imagine. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Jesus, you join humanity in suffering and death. Reveal to all the depth of your love shown on the cross. Accompany all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Restore all who are sick or grieving. Bring vindication for victims of injustice, exploitation, and oppression, especially those on our prayer list, and those we lift up before you now in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You made Abraham and Sarah the ancestors of a multitude of nations. Bless grandparents, parents, and foster parents, and the children who look to them for care and guidance. Console those who deal with infertility, parents who have entrusted their children to adoption, and children longing to be adopted. Equip ministries and services to families. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We await the day of Christ's coming in glory. Lead us by the example of all the saints whom you have called to take up their cross and follow you, that together we may find our lives in you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with me. I invite you to take this time to share a sign of peace with someone you care about today. Call them, text them, send them a Facebook message. Let them know that you are thinking about them. Put love in action by sharing a gesture of peace. And now, friends, it's time for our morning offering. Each week, we have the opportunity to give in generosity as a reaction and response to God's generous gifts to us. And I thank you for all the ways that you are generously giving back um, to this congregation by participating in worship, by volunteering in any of our numerous ministry teams or mission outreaches, and by sharing your financial gifts. All of these are ways that you help us to put our mission first here. And I give thanks for all that you do. As you prepare your morning offering today, I invite you to enjoy this beautiful piece by Jackie. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jackie. That arrangement of near the cross was lovely. Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Friends, it's now time for us to gather at the table. And if you need to pause this video so that you can retrieve your bread or crackers and wine or grape juice, you may do so at this time. You are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you to mercifully accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Lord God, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, come. The table is ready. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Amen. Body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for me. Would you please pray with me? God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, and let the people say amen. Receive now this blessing. You are what God has made you, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go in peace.
Put love in action. Thanks be to God.